Hello, I'm Sangeeta Khanna. This is my husband, Mr. Narendra Khanna. He's a patient of dystonia. Initially, in June 2016, he started the problem of cervical dystonia. By and by, it increased to a generalized uh, dystonia, wherein his upper, the trunkal body was uh, having great uh, movements, which were at times really uncontrollable and unmanageable at home. We went to a lot of hospitals, a lot of um, uh, neuro, neuro, neurologists we consulted and finally uh, Dr. Vinay Goel of uh, All India Institute of Medical Sciences suggested that we should get the surgery done from Dr. Aditya Gupta and Dr. Sumit Singh of Artemis Hospital. Uh, this is about Mr. Khanna who came to us uh, about three months ago and he had a very rare disease which is called primary generalized dystonia. Now Mr. Khanna had been suffering from this disease for the past two, three years and he had been to various hospitals, various specialists, neurologists, movement disorder specialists, but the dystonic movements could not be controlled. Finally on the 20th of May, when his condition was really really very unmanageable uh, at home. We got him an emergency. After discussing with Dr. Aditya that he should be brought into the emergency, he was uh, immediately taken care of by the emergency people. And within an hour or two, since it, he was a case of ICU, he was shifted to the ICU neuro. This patient, Narendra Khanna, when he comes to us at the time, he was in dystonic crisis. First, actually, we wanted to maintain him with the sedative drugs. But with the sedative drugs, he was not able to maintain his airway. Most of these patients actually are doing well in the OPD only. But this is a special case which actually requires an intensive care. At that time, to maintain his airway on a sedative drugs which were going on very very high dose, we have to intubate the patient and eventually the patient went into a tracheostomy. But during the uh, tracheostomy also, after the tracheostomy also, we were not able to wean the patient off from the ventilator because the dystonic crisis were continued despite having five drugs for dystonia and we were still giving injection midazolam and injection propofol infusion continuously to him so that he, the dystonic crisis would be over and we were able to take the patient for the surgery. And once the patient was stabilized on a single drug and the patient was on a very low dose of midazolam infusion, we actually take up the patient for the surgery. The surgery was also a challenge because we have to do it in a very lighter plane to, to see that whether the DBS leads which we are placing should not cause any side effect or any harm to the patients. So that was done successfully. And once uh, the patients actually being, uh, have a DBS surgery, then we are able to wean the patient from the ventilator very, very successfully. Uh, there, uh, he was really uh, taken care of very well and uh, despite a little bit of infections, urine infection, pneumonia and everything, they managed it very well. All the medicines were given on time. Uh, there are no bed sores which uh, such patients do uh, encounter. So I think the care in the ICU was really very, um, very creditable. The surgery was done on the 13th of June. Uh, he came to us in a situation uh, practically when we had to admit him into the ICU and this severe form of dystonia is called as status dystonicus. Now this basically meant that he was having very severe movements of his whole body 24 hours a day and basically we had to keep him on very heavy doses of sedation to control the movements. In fact we had to put in a breathing tube so that we could give him those medicines in a in a big dose and to stop his movements totally. In fact, he was on the ventilator for close to four or five days in the ICU. Now, when we saw that the medicines are not able to control this uh, kind of uh, severe bodily movements in dystonia, uh, we thought of using the next treatment available which is a very special operation called deep brain stimulation. Now in deep brain stimulation, basically it is like a pacemaker for the brain. Uh, what we basically do is we put wires into a particular part of the brain, which is called as the globus pallidus internus. And these wires are lie beneath the skin and they are joined to a pacemaker, which is beneath the collarbone 
much like what we have in a patient who has a cardiac pacemaker. Mr. Narendra Khanna came to us in a state what we call as dystonia storm. This is a condition which is extremely rare and very very complicated. These patients have very grotesque and bizarre posturing of their extremities and body. They are in extreme pain and their entire body is twisted and turned. He was admitted in the ICU. He had to be put on a, a mechanical ventilator and we had to give him uh, sedatives and uh, other drugs which tend to cause almost like an unconscious state for about two weeks. Once he stabilized on medication and these injections, we decannulated him and we took him out of the ventilator and then we put him on uh, deep brain stimulation. Deep brain stimulation is a surgery which is routinely done for dystonia patients but in patients who have status dystonicus or dystonia storm, not many people go in for deep brain stimulation surgery straight away. We operated upon him and inserted thin wires inside his brain and it was very very surprising and very very astonishing to us to see that the very next day after surgery Mr. Khanna was able to lie normally without any injection to sedate him or make him sleepy. It was a very very rewarding and a very happy moment for us to see such an excellent response to deep brain stimulation surgery in a patient within two or three days. Normally we expect that type of response in a dystonia patient in about three to six months time. His surgery finally was done on the 13th of June and as you can see that the movements, he is a very quiet man uh, now, which the earlier the movements which were uncontrollable, unmanageable, he is very quiet, very uh, just like his, uh, you know, like he is recovering very fine and we are really very happy with the kind of um, treatment, the attention and uh, the overall uh, management of his uh, uh, disease that has been done. Now this uh, surgery was done on the 13th of June and what we observed is that within a week after the surgery he showed a very good response and his movement started subsiding and he was able to be shifted out of the ICU, he was able to get back to his room the physiotherapist started making him sit and he was starting to take normal food. Then he started to stand and walk. And in fact, we were very, very delighted and happy at the kind of improvement he showed. Typically what we have seen is patients with this severe kind of dystonia could even take up to three to six months after the DBS surgery is done uh, to show this kind of an improvement. But this patient showed very good improvement within the first week uh, when we started the programming of the pacemaker which is typically done on the immediately the day following the surgery. So we have been very very happy with the progress and the improvement of uh, Mr. Khanna. He says that uh, because he was suffering for almost uh, to, uh, 17, 18 months, this is a great relief and all thanks to the doctors and uh, the team of um, support staff at Artemis that he is now able to speak uh, to all of you.